Sam here, and I will be doing the free video for September 2nd, 2022. So another week is in the books. It was a wet and wild one, full of bearishness, properly so, many would say. Didn't close great in terms of the week, um, but what I want to show you here, because I just finished making the video for the premium folks, um, for the folks in the gold room, the premium video. And, um, you know, we look at everything. We look at the dollar. We look at all the indices. We look at uh, bonds. We look at VIX. Um, we cover some of the sectors. And everything basically looks the same. So there really isn't any nuance going into next week. The only bit of nuance that I'm seeing is potentially in energy, but I'm a little bit concerned with the way that the, the oil and the S&P are trading. So let's put energy off to the side. The rest of the market, the other 11, 12 sectors, they don't look good. They all look collectively bad, and the indices look bad. And I have mid-level sell signals on the NASDAQ. So what I wanted to do in this video, because there's not a lot of nuance to really cover, right? The, the, main, thing, the main level that I would give you for SPY, because th this is probably the main level that I can give you, 388 to 389 on SPY. If they break that level on a daily close, that opens up the door immediately for a retest of the June lows. And once we get back to the June lows, in my estimation, we're not going to hold. So why do I think that we're not going to hold? Well, let me show you. So we'll just cover this because there's going to be, this is basically the chart of the day. So I want to show you three signals here. This is the NASDAQ, NDX. <clears throat> this is a monthly chart. I'm using the Squeeze, the Trend Oscillator Pro, and the High Low Pro. So let's start with the simple one. I'm going to show you three signals here. The simple one is the moving averages, right? We're all familiar with moving averages. We're all familiar with we, we, what we want to see. We want to see them kind of stacked, angled, supportive of price as things go up. And we also don't want to see crossovers, right? If you're bullish at all, you don't want to see a negative crossover. If you're bearish, you definitely want to see a negative crossover. So let's look back here and see the white line here is the weekly eight and the green line is the weekly 21. And just to avoid any confusion here, let me simplify this even more, because you don't need that, and you don't need this, and frankly, you don't even need the little red line down there. So let's, keep, let's make this as simple as possible. So let's go back to 2009, and you see right here where the white line crosses the, the green line? That's a bullish crossover. You also have all the buy signals, right? So there's this moment in time right through here at the end of 2009, start of 2010, they kind of shifted the, the game, right? The, but let's focus on one signal at a time. You see the positive crossover here? A white line crosses upwards through the, the green line. That's 2009. You see how the white line, as I scroll across, the white line has stayed above the green no matter what. Uh, even during some pretty bad moments, like for example, COVID. I was led to believe that was a bad moment. You see how the lines didn't cross over? Uh, 2018, 2019, no crossover. All through here, where the market didn't do anything, no crossover, right? Look what's happening now. See how you have a negative crossover? So if it wasn't so persistent in terms of the duration of this structure, um, I wouldn't be so negative about it. But this is the first negative crossover in 13 years. So that's price structure and that's point number one. It's the easiest point, but it's a very, very powerful point. Point number two, very easy as well. See all these up arrows back here? Would it get you long? and kept you long. For how long? For 13 years. 2009 all the way to right here where the signal ends. So what's interesting here is you see how the moving averages cross positively and it gives you buy signals at the same time. And then you see how juxtaposed 13 years later it gives you sell signals or a negative crossover and a sell signal. Those two signals here that I just boxed in poorly 
are essentially uh, completely opposite signals, and they're 13 years apart. So that's point number two. And it's a very powerful point in my opinion, because again, 13 year difference, first cell signal, you didn't even get a cell signal during COVID. Point number three is a little bit more subtle, but really powerful. So this indicator that I'm messing with here, this is a trending indicator. What you want to see is you want to see the trending indicator look like price. So if price looks like that, where it's making higher highs and higher lows, the trending indicator should also mirror it. You see how price from here to here went way up, right? This is like from 5,000 to about 15,000, 16,000, like a triple, it's tripled. <clears throat> price went way up. You see how the indicator has actually gone down? So from this point to this point, you've made a lower momentum move while making higher prices. That's a negative momentum divergence, and it's on a monthly chart. These can take years to resolve, right? Because they take years to build. Um, so the way to think about a negative momentum divergence is essentially kind of like, um, you know, I always refer to it as gasoline, right? So if you have gasoline, it doesn't matter how much gasoline you have, you don't have a fire, right? However, if you have a lot of gasoline and you introduce a spark, all of a sudden you have a fire and potentially an explosion. And that's kind of the dynamics here. So the negative divergence that I just showed you, that's, think of that like a bucket of gasoline, maybe an ocean of gasoline in this instance. And the spark to light that on fire is that <clears throat> plus that plus this. So what does it all mean? Well, it means that markets here are more dangerous than I think I have seen since 2008 and um, the potential fall from here understanding that the signals that I'm showing you are 13 years apart uh, could be one for the history books so going into next week uh, keep that in mind um, also understand that if this dynamic is anywhere close to correct you probably will only want to trade short for swing trades meaning trades that you're going to hold for longer than two three weeks and you can trade long day trades or maybe one to two days but this is the most dangerous market that i have seen since 2008 and the signals that i'm showing you here are as early as they could be and it implies that a lot more is coming bang 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 and bang so stay short look for bounces to short into um, the bigger the bounce the better the opportunity is to short don't feel like you've missed out if you get a huge bounce because again all signals imply that the markets are going to be coming in quite a bit more and um, and hopefully that'll keep you on the right side of the trade so I wanted to just focus on one thing today with you guys um, because again there's not a lot of nuance in the markets and that was going to be this NDX chart with this trifecta of signals so hopefully you found that helpful um, before you go anywhere else on the YouTube and watch a cat video uh, make sure you leave us a like uh, leave us a comment. You can tell me to stop telling you scary stories. Uh, or if you agree with my scary stories, or if you're short and the scary stories are actually um, uh, fairy tales for you, <laughs> because you're like, I'm going to get paid off of this signal uh, because I have puts, uh, then let us uh, let us know what uh, what you're drinking tonight or maybe what your, uh, your, your pet's name is, right? Just something to help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Just bless that algorithm for us if you found this helpful. And aside from that, guys, stay safe out there. Have a great, long weekend. Make some memories. Have some fun. Like I tell the folks in the gold room, hug a dog, pet a cat, feed a squirrel, and tell someone you love them. See you next week, guys. Cheers. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me over.